Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The secondary commandment, everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 39. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Second lesson, John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also Love one another, by this shall all men know that ye are all my disciples, if you have love one to another. Golden text, John chapter 15, verses 9 to 10. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. The Source of Salvation Quote Beloved, the above texts speak for themselves and my duty is to deliver the gospel to you as read. This gospel and the previous one entitled The Primary Commandment have the same theme and are related. This gospel should be made available to all persons, to all groups, and to all organizations in all parts of the world. If it were God's intention that we should perish, He would not have preached and published this gospel. This sister gospel to this the primary commandment of Christianity is the foremost advice as stated in the first lesson above. Neither, next to this is the commandment of love one another. No one in the world has ever had such wisdom. This gospel should be likened to a student who learns counting from one Except such a person begins from zero to count, he will get stuck soon after counting digit nine. But if you begin from zero to count, after the digit nine, it would be easier to repeat the numerals, combining one with zero to get ten. 1 with 1 to get 11, 2 with 0 to get 20, and so forth. Therefore, counting begins with the digit 0 to 9, not to 9, after which all the numbers merely repeat themselves. The above illustration indicates how great God's love to man is. The primary commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the secondary commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. It is the foundation stone upon which this kingdom is built. It is often said that even if one sells all he has and distributes them to the poor, he goes ahead to offer himself to be burned without char charity, such a person stands to profit nothing. Many people wonder why all their efforts in giving alms and being benevolent yield them no fruit at all. The reason is simple, and that is such people begin counting from one, skipping zero. There is no way a man can love his neighbor without first of all loving his God. Love therefore begins with loving God with 
all your heart, soul, and mind before extending the same to your fellow man. That is the formula which everyone has to follow. Once you miss the formula, your answer is bound to be wrong. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. That was in John chapter 14 verse 1. The above statement of Christ indicates adherence to the above formula of recognizing God first in everything. The lesson derivable from this gospel are many. The foremost of them all is to give God his rightful position of first place and then our Lord Jesus Christ in the second position. The doctrine of loving your neighbor as yourself is therefore belated. Nobody will love his neighbor without first of all loving God and, theref and thereby transfer the same love to man. A man who does not love God first with all his heart, mind and soul cannot love his fellow man. These words come directly from God. These are not the words of angels or men. Our Lord Jesus Christ once asked the people, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? That was in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. He went further to say, that not all those who call him Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of God, but those who do the will of his Father who is in heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ said again that he who rejects him and his words will not be judged by him, but the word that he preaches will judge him on the last day. If you do not love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, how will you love your neighbor? And if you fail to love your neighbor, what then is the purpose of our gathering here in this kingdom? Man is unable to love his neighbor because he does not love his God. This gospel is delivered for your own good to bring awareness of God's expectation to you. A man is never static in life. It is neither he, it is either he progresses or retrogresses. For not loving God, we are equally unable to love our fellow man. The question now is, what has man gained from his disobedience? Your salvation and that of the whole world is centered on this gospel. Whoever loves God with all his whole heart, mind and soul will never lament, cry or be distressed. It will be very simple for any person who loves God to love his neighbor. If Adam and Eve had loved God first with all their heart, mind and soul, they would not have been <coughs> enticed to eat the forbidden fruit. This means that whoever refused to love God is bound to fail. And this explains why Christ said that as the Father loves him, so also does he love you and that you should continue in his love. All the material things such as money, houses, cars, wives, husbands and children that we struggle for are transitory. The most important of all the commandments in the Bible is what you have been told here. Whoever fails to love man has no life. We should therefore discard the advice of man and practice the injunctions of God. What you are reading here does not come from <coughs> leader Olumba, Olumba, Abu or Angel, but from God. Brethren, man and God are one. 
Therefore, if we love God with all our mind, heart, and soul, we will love our neighbors as ourselves. The most precious and greatest of all things is our Lord Jesus Christ and the Almighty God. Our life here on earth and anywhere else is dependent upon the love of God. It is said that tongues, knowledge, prophecy, and all the mundane things shall pass away, but love shall endure forever. It behoves that we should love one another, for God is love. God himself loves his Son, and the Son loves us. We should therefore continue in the same love. The problems that plague mankind are traceable to his disobedience. Human beings steal, fornicate, adulterate, kill, and generally live abominable lives because they do not love God. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, Matthew chapter 22. Verses 38 to 39, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Brethren, it is the creator of heaven and earth who has enjoined us all to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind and soul, so that we will be able to love our neighbors like ourselves. The question is, has man ever blamed himself for the sins he commits? Whatever you wish men to do for you, you have to do the same to your fellow man. As you love yourself, by taking good care of yourself, you should do the same to your fellow man. Money, house, food, and the rest of the material things are man-made. God wants from us what he has given to us, which is the love of one to another. If we had loved God with all our heart, mind, and soul, we would not quarrel or fight or steal or hate our fellow man and cause division. At the time, Adam and Eve complied with the commandment of God. There was no problem or evil at all. It was from the moment that Adam and Eve devi deviated from God's love that they disobeyed him and were consequently visited with, visit with visitudes. The solution to all your problem is provided in this gospel. In times past, the gospel of repentance had been preached and will continue to be preached. The question now is, what is repentance all about? It is loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul. Man has no other responsibility apart from loving God first and then his neighbor. God is the creator and owner of everything. God is life, is peace, prosperity, truth, and all the virtues. Heaven and earth are made of love and it is the kingdom of God. The only commandment. Brethren, people erroneously believe and preach that God gave ten commandments. It is true that God's commandments are ten. God, is it true that God's commandments are ten? God has only one commandment, which is love. That is why he enjoins us to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love our, and then love our neighbor. If one gives you a vision or advises you to donate money to God or sweep the church, tell such a person to get behind you. The only vision or advice is to love God with all your heart, mind and soul, which is the first commandment. The second is that you should love your neighbor as yourself. The reason I do not relent 
in, in preaching. This gospel of love to you is because it is the key to salvation. If we love God, we would be spotless and the whole world would be in peace. I want you to live by this wisdom. If God commands you to count one, two, three, you should repeat exactly what he tells you to do, not adding or subtracting anything at all. If you count one, two, three, when he said you should count one and two, then you have failed. On the other hand, if you count one only, when he instructed you to count one and two, it means you have also failed. If God reveals himself to you in spirit, and thereafter he warns you not to disclose his identity to any person, you have to do just that, even at the point of death. If he reveals five things to you and instructs you to disclose, to disclose only three, you have to do just that. If you do more or less, then he, if you do more than more or less than he has instructed you to do, it means you are inviting trouble upon yourself. If God gives you 20 things to give out to people, do not attempt to keep one or even half for yourself. If you reserve any quantity for yourself, you are, res you are reserving problems to yourself. Do you not know that wherever there is smoke, there is fire? If you fail to love God, how then would you love man? Whoever loves his neighbor had loved God first. You do not need to ask a person who loves God. His name are where he comes from. The qualification and nationality of such a person are found in love. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson. John chapter 13 verses 34 to 35. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Brethren, with what was Christ identified as the Son of God? It was with love. That is why it was written about him in Matthew chapter 12 verse 20. A bruise reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench till he sent forth judgment unto victory. It was also written that he shall not resist an evildoer, he shall not fight, and shall not cause any division. If you intend to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to apply the first formula of loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second, loving your neighbor, if you desire to answer the name, to, to answer the name, a child of God, you have to love your neighbor as yourself, even if God gives you power to heal the sick and to do many other wonderful works, it does not profit you anything unless you love your God with all your heart, mind and soul, if, he, if God should give you money, food, and every other material thing without the love of God in you, it does not profit you anything. Whether your name is Christ or Jesus or God or Almighty, all those names cannot avail you anything except you love God. Even if you build a mighty cathedral, furnish the interior with expensive furniture, and go ahead to feed the congregation of the church daily. All avail you nothing if you do not love God with all your heart, mind and soul. What particular quality of garment would you put on to show that you are a child of God? What nature of food or dwelling place can 
grant you the necessary qualification into the kingdom of God. There is no type of teaching or behavior that will identify you as a child of God other than loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. You are privileged to hear from the horse's mouth. As such, you have to excuse whatsoever you give. The only way you could be identified as a child of God is to love your neighbor as yourself. No church or prayer house or institution of learning exists other than the man who loves his neighbor as himself. The time you would have wasted in stealing, fighting, quarreling, killing and living abominable life should be used to love God with all your heart, mind and soul and in addition extend such love to your neighbor just as you love yourself. Many claim to have seen God face to face. Good enough. The question is, if you have seen God face to face, what will that avail you if you are devoid of love? If you profess to have dined with God and have drunk in the same cup with Him, what form of salvation will that afford you if you do not love your God with all your heart, soul and mind? A person who has physical contact with God equally stand to gain nothing except he loved God. Learn from the case of Judas Iscariot. He was a relation of Christ and came from the same tribe of Judea. He dined with Christ, lived with him and was an apostle and also appointed the treasurer. Despite all these privileges, did Judas Iscariot obtain salvation? This is the same error many of you make in this kingdom. You boast of being an apostle or a pastor, a vision or elder, among other positions. All these positions and names do not avail you anything except you practice his commandments. If a person should be invited to stay with the Father in the vestry, such a person will not fail to go about boasting of his closeness with the Father. Even at the point of working with the Father in the vestry, this would cause others to be jealous erroneously, believing that the Father discriminates. Such persons would not sit back to reason that such privilege do not avail a man anything good. This explains why he said that he is the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except by him. Therefore, no person can inherit the kingdom of God or even be called a child of God except he love God. Do not allow any privilege you enjoy from God to get into your head. He is a sufficient and gracious God who allows the sun to shine on both the just and the evil and the rain to fall on the roof of all. Therefore, when whatever you may enjoy from God, you are expected to love him and your neighbor. In essence, all the things he gives to you do not avail you anything. It is not true that God loves you more than anybody else. Whoever says that God abides with him alone is a liar. Even if people hail you as Jesus or Christ or Spirit or Jehovah, do not rejoice over such claim. If you do not love God and your neighbor, this gospel should be made available to presidents of all nations, to all heads of churches and all the creations of God, including the angels.
read the golden text again. Golden text, John chapter 15, verses 9 to 10. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Brethren, this gospel is so brief and clear for all to understand. Whatever name you may call yourself as true descendants of God, members of the New Jerusalem among other names, none of these names will avail you any good except you love God and your neighbor. I have been telling you that the spirit that is here has never existed anywhere. Christ said that as the Father loved him, so as he loved you, continue ye in that love. He also said in the scripture that if you keep his commandment, you will abide in his love. As he has kept his Father's commandment and abide in his love, it means therefore that if we love every person, we have kept his commandment. In other words, if you love every person, you will not be angry, you will not steal, cause, con cause division, commit adultery, and be selfish, or live unwholesome life. Do not associate money or any mundane thing with God. The only thing that interests God is the virtue of love. Whoever loves abides in God, and God abides in him. God abides in no other place than in love. Where love abides, there also is peace, mercy, humility, and God. Ever since the world was created, love has not been on earth except now. The Holy Spirit has come with love, truth, mercy, meekness, humility, and the rest of the virtues. If somebody descends from the sky and calls himself any name, do not mind him except he is with the virtue of love. If somebody should emerge from the sea to say that he is the Almighty, do not listen to him except you find in him the virtue of love. And if somebody emerges from the bush or wind armed to the teeth with weapons and calls himself the Almighty, do not give him your ears for God does not behave that way. The only quality you should look for in a person is love. And so, where, wherever you see love, there God abides. The Father is love, the Son is love, and the Holy Spirit is also love. The three entities establish the kingdom of love on earth that has come to stay. He has come with all the virtues and all the good things. It is not a matter of composing and singing songs, or of dancing, or of giving vision. All these things are transitory. Love is forever. <coughs> Excuse me. If love should consist in singing and dancing, what would be the fate of those who cannot sing or dance? Many people claim to be members of brotherhood and do not care to love their neighbor. Membership in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star entitles no one any automatic access into the kingdom of God. Even if you call yourself a child of God, that name alone will not offer you salvation except you love one another. It is said that it is the new heaven and the new earth wherein dwelt righteousness does the king does this kingdom constitute of dancing singing and f feasting all these things are more physical all these things are mere physical exercises it is said that the israelites failed to enter into the promised land because of their disobedience but after the era of Moses, God fixed another day for them. If Joshua had appointed to them any day, God would not have given to them another day. 
If one is given a day of rest, it means one has worked enough and deserves some rest. The same is the person who has loved. Any person who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the scripture and qualifies for rest. This explains why whoever is afflicted and wants peace come to the Father. All those who rush to 34 Amber Street, Calabar to see the Father and who engages in long prayers are devoid of love and are also without God. People who lack the virtue of love are the ones who complain and continue to lament in order to escape the wrath of God. It is a basic, it is basic that you love one another. God has never called a person when the person is in perfect condition or has the virtue of love. God calls you to himself at the time you are worthless so that you will avail yourself of the opportunity he has given you to mortify the flesh and discard all the evil in you. Many people enjoy a peaceful life in this kingdom because they have forsaken every evil and embraced love. Whoever continue to abide in the love of Christ, which is the extension of the love of his Father, is free of every problem. The only commandment God has is love. Many people question why a man of God should prosper and live well. If a man of God should not enjoy prosperity and all the good things on earth, the question is, who then should enjoy it? Is God not the owner of all these things? In fact, the proper question should be, why should a man of God enjoy good things and prosper? Such persons are those who pass through the window into the room. That is why they lost these things within a short time. It is written that everything on earth belongs to God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and establish it upon the floods, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That was in Psalm chapter 24, verses 1 to 5, brethren. This confirms the statements in Psalm chapter 15, which says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own heart, and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent he that doeth these things shall never be moved dear brethren there is hell and heaven here on earth the children of god and those of the devil are also here on earth all those who have no love are children of perdition all those who fail to love god with all their hearts body and soul and do not love their neighbors as themselves are bound to perish. What is happening here now is not surprising and should not surprise anybody. It is the manifestation of the dream which Nebuchadnezzar had 
and was given accurate interpretation by Daniel. It was explained to him that a kingdom shall arise that will compass every other kingdom. All we have to do is to obey him and abide in his love so that peace may abound. Love does not cause division, nor fight, nor steal, or do any evil. How do people enjoy the money and other material things that they steal? The prodigal son realizes mistakes in time and returns to his father where he enjoyed peace, love, and prosperity once again. Many people who knew about the kingdom and who were waiting for it were not opportune to behold it. But the arrival of this kingdom has brought about peace and sanity. The children of God go out and preach the word of God freely without any obstruction. A stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.